Hey everybody! In this video we're going to talk about a variety of different ways that we can transfer images. So a lot of times we use image transferring to uh, work out our composition or our image before starting on a final artwork. Uh, and there's a few ways that we can work on transferring. So first and foremost, I would have to say the most obvious would be drawing it from observation. Uh, so I feel like this is probably the hardest one because it requires the most thought and the most skill, but uh, drawing from observation is, I think, probably one of the most important skills that an artist can learn because it teaches us how to see and how to translate what we see in real life onto a surface. So I think it's important that we learn how to do that before we move on to other methods because, you know, once you learn the rules, you can break the rules. Um, so one transfer method that I think works pretty well that also teaches us how to see is the grid system. So using a grid system to draw from helps us break down our image into smaller chunks so that they're a little easier to kind of focus on and you know less overwhelming. So when we are working with the grid system, um, we are looking at sort of proportional relationships between parts of our object and the grid itself. And what's helpful with the grid system is that we can enlarge our image or we can shrink it down and still maintain those same proportions. So you may have seen some of my other videos about the grid system. Pretty helpful if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, but, you know, using the grid system can also teach us how to see those sorts of proportional relationships when we're drawing without it. So it's a great sort of tool for people who are starting to work at drawing realistically from a reference. Then our next transfer method is called the carbon transfer method. And we can use the carbon method in conjunction with a grid drawing or a regular sketch or a photograph, which is the very contentious issue that we'll need to talk about. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about how the carbon transfer works. So you'll need two sheets of paper. One would be a sketch page and the second would be the same size and would be your final artwork. And how it works is you'll complete your drawing on your sketch paper and that allows us to make mistakes and it allows us to revise and work out problems before we move on to the final page. What you're going to do is you're just going to flip that page over and on the back side you will color the whole back in with graphite. When we're all finished, we will lay down our final surface that we want to work on, and then we will place the sketch on top um, with the graphite colored inside facing down. And what I like to do is kind of tape them in place just in a couple spots. It doesn't need to be a whole bunch, just so it doesn't move around. And from there, I'm going to take a ballpoint pen, or you could use a sharpened pencil. I like pen better because there's a difference in color, so you can kind of tell where you've been. And I'm going to just trace over the images or the lines of my drawing. And what happens is the pressure from the pen pushes that graphite that's on the back of the paper onto your second sheet of paper. That leaves us with sort of a carbon copy image of the original. However, there is one major drawback. The big drawback here is if you push too hard with that pen, what's going to happen is it's going to engrave or indent the surface of your paper on the final paper, which could be pretty problematic, um, especially if you are doing detailed shading or something. Um, because what would happen is as you're shading, you have this nice, soft, smooth, flat surface, and then all of a sudden you hit a divot. And then your shading won't want to go into those lines, so you'll have kind of like a ghost image of your outlines, which is not really helpful, especially if you're aiming for pretty intense realism. So it's important that you want to um, not use too much pressure when you are transferring your image. Um, so just a medium amount should work. 
Now for the contentious part of image transferring. Um, a lot of, I'm going to say a lot of artists do this. I don't think a lot of artists will say that they do it, but I think they do because it's a great drawing hack if you're in a hurry. <laughs> uh, and that would be to print out a photograph of whatever your reference is and then do the carbon transfer method. So you're just tracing directly from that photograph onto your final paper. Now I'm going to say I definitely use this method from time to time if I'm in a rush. Um, but what puts me on the fence about it is I know as an artist that I could 100% draw that from a reference using my observational skills if I wanted to. So I know I can do that. So I feel comfortable breaking the rules because I already learned the rules. Um, however, I would say if you don't know the rules and you're using this tracing method just as a way to get around not knowing it, um, I think that in that case, I would probably f feel a little more negatively about it. Uh, so the question is, is it cheating? Is it not? Uh, many questions here. <laughs> if you have a strong opinion, you could leave it in the comments. Um, so one thing that I like, or one argument that I like to make is, you know, I might trace this one part, but does it mean I can paint it? Does it mean I could shade it or render it realistically with whatever media I'm using? Um, so that's another argument. You know, you might try and cut corners one way or the other, but it's still difficult to finish it with the other media that you're planning on working with. So that's another argument to be made one way or the other. So I think if you learn the rules, you can break the rules. Our last method of transfer requires a little bit more technology and that involves transferring with a projector. So you could use your old school overhead projector. It's a little uh, clunky, but it works pretty well. Or you could use a digital projector if you have one of those. Um, so there are a few ways to do it. If you're using a digital projector, you can just pop your photo right up there. And from there, you can trace onto whatever surface you're doing. Um, if you are using an overhead projector, you will need some transparency paper. And the transparency paper, you could get the kind where you can print your image on there, or you can just draw over the top of that. If you're unable to print an image onto your transparency paper, it's as simple as tracing your drawing or your photograph onto the transparency with a Sharpie. So um, I like to do this method uh, when I'm painting murals because I can kind of change the size of my image a lot more easily. And it allows me to make a drawing that I can easily put into chunks to project in certain areas. So all I need to do is just take a Sharpie and I'm going to outline my image. Uh, this could be a drawing, this could be a photograph that you're outlining. It just kind of depends on what your image is that you need to project. And once you have your image traced, then you can take your transparency and project it up onto whatever surface you plan on drawing on. Once you have your image on transparency paper, then we can start projecting it with the overhead projector. So like I said earlier, I really like this method of projecting because I can transport it, I can move it around, um, and I can make things nice and big. Um, I love to use overhead projectors when I am painting a mural. So usually I make my sketches first, then I print them onto a transparency. And from there, I can just trace it onto the wall or onto a giant canvas or whatever surface that I'm working on. The only difficulty is trying to work so that you aren't casting a shadow over your drawing. All right, so as you can see, this is a great way of 
enlarging an image and reproducing a drawing or a photograph really quickly um, using just a little bit of technology. So hopefully you found a few ways that you can transfer your images onto a surface depending on the scale or the surface that you're working on and you can find out what's best for you. So thanks for watching and keep creating.